Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Like a Fly on the Cartwheel. Now in my last video, I had ended by talking about how all our memories and all our thoughts, all our beliefs about ourselves and the I that we imagine, my name, my place of stay, what do I do, what are my characteristics, all this which is composed of our I is just data or memories as they would lie in a computer and these don't have life in themselves to really change the direction in which we are moving. They have to be used and seen by something, to be used by someone. But then that's something else, that's not the I as we understand it. Now many of you may not have been impressed or still convinced that this I which I tried to break apart or shatter in the last video is really not there. Now logic says that it's data, it cannot influence the moment but still many of you feel deeply maybe there's something, maybe this I exists and you know these are just words but it doesn't seem to gel with me yet. So I'm going to use more logics, more ways to really convince you that this I, as we imagine it, all our recordings, our, our knowledge about ourselves is really dead and not anything real in the moment. So what we will do now is a, a simple thought experiment in which you have to make yourself a guinea pig of this experiment and imagine that this is happening to you and as you imagine this, a lot of insights will come. Now the experiment may look very crazy but still bear with me because I'm sure we will learn a lot from this. So now just imagine that you as an individual today are a full individual, hands, arms, leg, head, brain, heart, everything in order. So now suddenly we were to lose our arm. Suppose I lost or you lost your arm and then the doctors fitted you with a new arm. Now this arm, as you know, science has developed a lot now. Uh, can really sense things, can move things, can feel things, you know, it's it's really alive because your mind and the sense and the neurons are all connected with this hand and you can actually make it function like your hand. Now, if you have a hand like this, which is not a hand which was your original hand, would you say that this hand does not belong to you or would you say that this hand is separate from you or in a, some way your I or your wholeness of your individuality has been reduced in some fashion or would you say that yeah I had an arm and I lost it now I have a new one and it works as well and you would still feel a full sense of I it would even go further you could lose both your arms both your legs many of us have our hearts replaced and still we are the same individual we are the same I we are the same person. We don't see such a big gap. Very soon, we start to own that piece which is added to us and it becomes us. And many times we just forget that we had changed some part of ours. So in short, can we say that any of our parts individually is, an, is our I? And you realize that's not. It is just replaceable. And in reality, Scientists have found that all the cells of your body in a period of a time, couple of years, they change. They all replace themselves. The person you were five to seven years ago is no longer the same person today. It's physically completely changed. Every cell in the body has changed barring one set of cells. And that's the brain cells. The brain cells and the cortex is the one which remains same from childhood to death. They don't change. Now you'll say, aha, that is my eye. My eye rests in my brain. The body is all replaceable, but the eye is in the brain. I'm sure many of you are thinking, yes, it's my brain where the memories lie. That's what is fixed. That's what is me. Now, we continue with this thought experiment and it gets really funny. So again, bear with me. Now imagine that suddenly, you would have an accident 
and lose all your memory. You know this happens. There are a lot of amnesiacs. They lose their memory. They don't remember anything about their past life. They remember basic tasks. They know how to talk. They know how what is what are the items, what they drink, what they eat. But they just can't remember their names. They don't remember their past history. They, they change the characteristics also. Many of them fall apart. Now, if you lose your memory and you can't remember who you are, uh, I would ask you, does your eye in any fashion remain? And you will say, yes, maybe there's an eye. Now let's continue and continue this journey of this thought experiment. If I was to transport you in this state of loss of memory to a different geography, different life, and I was to tell you that now you are this new person and you don't remember anything, so you are ready to accept what comes. Slowly everybody meets you, you meet your uh, relatives, your parents, and you know, we just set up a new name for you. And soon you start to believe this is probably what I was and I forgot. And then some years go by and soon you are well accepted in that new society. And you're also quite sure maybe this is what I was. And you know, you start to live that life and it becomes part of you. Now you're so accident prone, let's say, that you have another accident and you forget again. You have another amnesic attack and you even forget the second set of memories. And then again, I was to take you and I was to transport you to a third location and reset your life again. A new name, a new family, everything new. And soon you were living that in a couple of years. And then soon it's become part of you. Now you are a new person again, the third person as per as what we see. But as you see it, probably you are the same person. Now suddenly we have this doctor who knows how to cure you and to make you remember your entire past. And he gives you this injection. And soon, voila, you get back all your three life's memories. You remember all the three instances and you remember everything. Now tell me, who is the I? Is it your memories? In all the three lives, there were different eyes, the different descriptions of you, different data and memories of you. But then there was something constant. You can easily make out when you get back all your memories that there was something constant in all this. And there was something which was the I which was existing through and through. That's what you experience this all as. And that, my friends, is the big question. If you're not your body, you're not your memories, then who are you? What is this feeling of I or constancy that you experience as I? And does this thing which has this constancy of experience of I have a free will? Or does it not? And if it does not, then you are just a repetitive machine working on forces, physical and mental, and moving ahead. Or is there something which is fundamental to you, this I, which many of us would turn back and say, is this my soul? My ask to you and my question to you would be, now that's a new terminology. Do we really understand when we say, what's the soul? Is it in my brain? Is it in my heart? Is it all over me? Is it everywhere? Is it only in me? So, you know, those are the questions which come up. So with this, I end this video and I ask you to look forward into the next video where I will look into this concept of the soul or this thing which is constant between different memories, different bodies. Is there something like that at all? Or is it just a conception or a, of the human mind to please ourselves, to make ourselves feel that there is something constant about us. So thank you very much. I really appreciate the time you spent with me today. And please, if you like this video, if you like the thoughts that I'm presenting, please look down and subscribe to this channel and like the video.